it is me, Big CT, and we are live here on the Big CT. I want to thank you so much for joining me, Big CT, here on the Big Loud. Just the phone number, if you want to connect to me, Big CT is 724-444-7444. Once again, the phone number is 724-444-7444. And to connect to me, Big CT, the call ID is 92417- Again, the call ID is nine two four one seven. We got guests too in the chat room. If you can't call in or what have you, you live here on Talk to Remember. The chat room's on lock. You can actually uh, take uh, talk to me on chat, and I will answer your questions and comments and all that good stuff and have a good laugh with you. Anyway, thank you so much for listening to me live here on the Big CT Lounge on this cold Friday evening, uh, March uh, in the uh, yeah. Yeah, I survived in a snowstorm, and, well, I'm still here. But, well, looks like the snowstorms are completely done. At least I, that's what I think, and like I'm seeing in the future, it looks like there's nothing major happening for the rest of the uh, spring. That's what some people are saying, but you never know. Anyway, uh and here's opening us over. Well, okay, guess two. Welcome to the uh, Duke CT Lounge. Hoping you can hear the music and hear me perfectly. Now, let's see. What's the big stories that are coming on right now? Um, before I get into the hijack Monday Night Raw, which a lot of people are talking about, was it a success, was it a failure? Uh, there's a lot of things right now that people are talking about. But this... Ladies and gentlemen, it's breaking news. Breaking news, ladies and gentlemen. And if you haven't heard already, you have heard that TNA lockdown is going to be uh, um, going to be on uh, the next TNA pay-per-view. And they've done quite a good job, a very good job building up the program, building up everything else. I truly think it was actually pretty good stuff. But we have seen some big, bad stuff from TNA before. But here's hoping the stuff gets, um, what's the word, uh, you know, headed in the right ship. Because, I mean, it, I mean, people are just, um, uh, you know, a lot of people have been hyped up for TNA. Uh, lockdown. Some people say it's good, bad, or eh. But anyway, we have a major announcement that there is supposed to be a steel cage match between Kurt Angle versus the wrestling's greatest hero and the American icon, Ethan Carter III, EC3. But guess what? Kurt Angle has a MCL tear. Thanks to what happened, uh, what happened last Impact Wrestling, which I'll get into more later on in this uh uh, and later on in this uh, podcast, it was a very good show. But um, <laughs> there has been. It looks like Kurt Angle was attacked by EC3, and he was taken out by him. He was taken out by EC3. Um, he has a torn MCL thanks to the via EC3. That to me, and you know what. If this is the case, you know what? Um, honestly, this is actually pretty good uh, for for uh, you know for EC3. Take him out, have Kurt Angle get some more rest, heal up his his body, or what have you, and you know, and hopefully he comes back. He comes back better, and we'll have that match say you know around Bound for Glory, and EC3 can finally have that big loss. Oh, bring back the TV championship. Uh, I don't know, or something like that. Um, what's the anniversary? I mean, how oh, this is there. Can we just have a, um, you know, have, you know what, that would be perfect EC3. The TV title is meant for someone like a douchebag like him to hold the title and be um, for a long period of time for an up-and-coming face or something, say Tiger Uno, who's going to be in TNA. I don't know how long, but how about that? You have Tiger Uno beat uh EC3 at Slammiversary or something, man, you got a big new star there. 
Just saying. But that's just my personal opinion. But all in all, Kurt Angle is gone, ladies and gentlemen. Kurt Angle is gone. He's, he's gone. Baby, he's gone. Let the truth remain. EC3 took out Kurt Angle so that he's now gone. Ah, well, that's completely... Uh, well, it sucks for people who are, I was looking forward to it. But hey, you know what? It, hopefully, it, it brings up the storyline. It makes it has heat on EC3, amazing heat. And here's hoping that uh, Kurt Angle comes back 100%. Hopefully, you're around Slammiversary. That's my hope. Um, anyway, um, let's get back to the other stuff right here that's going to be talked about uh, this evening. Is that the hijack Monday Night Raw segment? Oh goodness, everybody was talking about hijack Raw. This, that, and the other. Everything was just getting so people were talking about this. But um, <laughs> um, well. Um, Kurt Angle, I mean, I have, um, crap, I'm looking at some storm stuff. <laughs> it looks like it's something uh, big or something like that is happening. I don't know, just uh, uh, hopefully not. But anyway, um, I'm looking at the hijack wall, which I this is the first Monday Night Raw I watched from beginning to end since October. And I'm going to say this, it was not a good show. It was a terrible show for the most part. It was long, tedious, and there were some good spots on the wall. There was some really good stuff there. I mean, I have to be completely fair. In the interest of fairness, there was some good stuff here on Monday Night Raw. Um, the first hour was really good. It was really good. Paul Heyman came out, had a great sheet promo that turned away from seeing Punk Chance to to talk about Brock Lesnar and The Undertaker. And honestly, and a miracle happened. Brock Lesnar got on the mic and actually had a decent promo. Good for someone like him, but yeah, he had a pretty good promo. A mir- that was a miracle right there. And <laughs> and after that, Brock Lesnar got to leave, and then you have Mark Henry come out. Again, third time's a charm. Hey, Mark. Uh, Mark comes out and gets his ass kicked again. Dude, he did this not once but twice but three times. You know, at this point, it's it's becoming comical for Brock Lesnar. It's becoming uh, to take out Mark Henry. Is it just a running joke now? Is it running as a running meme? Really? It's just it's it's sad. <laughs> and I like Mark Henry, but damn, he has done nothing. <sighs> um. Anyway, another thing I liked was the Usos uh, had a really good uh, tag match with new uh, the old age Outlaws, and I gotta say um, it was a very a very good match. And the Usos had some really good stuff here, and they won that the uh, they have won the new Penny Belts. They became the new Penny Belt champions, the new tag team uh, the, the new tag team champions. And congratulations, Uso. Um, <laughs> congratulations! You are now basically um, the only tag team because you see the because, ladies and gentlemen, they are now they are now, ladies and gentlemen, they're the only real tag teams there because Cody Rose and Goldust are going to break up. You're going to have the Real Americans, they're breaking up. The Primetime Predators are broken up. The Shield's breaking up. The only tag teams left, ladies and gentlemen, are Ryback and Curtis Axel, Los Motadores, and the Wyatt family. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, we have seen it is... What would you call this? Uh, yeah, a, 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 it looks like it's a bit of a drop. If you're, uh, yeah, <laughs> I know the belts, 
this suck. I know it's just it's always going to be a sticking point for me. The 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 the, the belts, the tag team belts, should re- represent the best of the of the best. What is wrong uh, with the best of the best? Um, the belts should not be just pennies. I mean, I know what they're trying to do with the gladiators, but. I mean, at this point, can they change them back to the old school ones? Because, you know, I mean, I have a saying, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And there was nothing wrong with the old belts whatsoever. There was nothing wrong with the WWF title. There was nothing wrong with the WWF, uh, the WWF championship from way back in the day, the Eagle, Golden Eagle, uh, the, uh, the Winged Eagle uh, belt. I still, I mean, honestly, God, dang, I'm not going back to the championship belts, man. It's terrible. Uh but honestly, I am happy they won the belts. But after that, you had a very mediocre promo from Daniel Bryan, and you had this other stuff. With this, uh, oh, Shield versus the Wire Fire. How can I almost forget? I, it was a great rematch. It was a very good, uh, good rematch. Both teams have great chemistry. <laughs> yes. So 3MB, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah, 3MB. Thank you, guest two. 3MB. I haven't seen them in a damn sure long time. I mean, seriously. God, when is Drew's going to break out? But, um, yeah. Um, here's, um, but hey, anyway, here's hoping that, uh, here's hoping that uh, the tag division gets back up on its feet. But um, anyway, why it's uh, Shield, great match. It was a great match, and Toast is a good chemistry. But in the end, this time, Seth Rollins rolled out. A.K.A. Okay, the next guy, the guy that we should be pushing instead of Roman Reigns. Well, don't get me wrong, I like me some Roman Reigns, but let's be real here. Who is people will likely cheer and lightly be the big, I mean, people will actually will care more about. A random big guy, Roman Reigns, which they got an extra street of, of him being him and um, Bray Wyatt in the middle of the ring, which was, oh, yeah, pretty mediocre at best. Or you can have someone who's ready right now who can do all those light heaven, those uh, cruiserweight moves, also some interesting technical stuff. And and if you, um, you know, really push him that hard, could be the next Jeff Hardy without all the drugs and, uh, well, you know, insert Willow clip here. Uh, but honestly, that could be the next big guy. That could be the next big thing. The WWE has that opportunity. But then again, I would not. I mean, it's just, well, you know, he's hoping, you know, he's hoping the WWE does right by him. But yeah, it's a shame that the uh, Shield and White won't have it at the. But you know, I'm okay with it. And speaking of the Wyatt and such, you have John Cena versus uh, Bray Wyatt of WrestleMania. I still don't give a damn about that match. Still don't. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see what else. One of the things that are big, big is happening. Oh, the Daniel Bryan stuff. Uh, honestly, as much as I like Daniel Bryan, he just is not there. I just, he's not a good promo guy. He isn't. He, he I mean, I know that problem. I, I mean, he has that good chant, but he's not really someone that grabs you. CM Punk can grab you. Uh, you know, Daniel Bryan, I mean, he's like Jeff Hardy in that aspect. His charisma is in the ring. His charisma is somewhere in, in, in the ring, his wing work and everything else. People like him and people want to be, you know, around. he has that energy in the ring, that in-ring charisma. Uh, um, promos, no. But yeah, it's it's just like that. It has nothing wrong with that. And by the way, Triple H versus Daniel Bryan, no thank you. I'm sorry, Triple H does not have that anymore. And Triple H is way, way past his prime. I mean, honestly the last good ma- match is well, you know. I think him and the Undertaker, at this, and at this point, the Undertaker is was probably the better one than that thing. You know, it takes two to tango, but I can guess who was the one leading uh, Triple H in that match. Yeah, uh, and the uh, guess too say 
Daniel Bryan can cut a good promo. WWE just won't allow him to have that as he added Ring of Honor and NXT. Well, and also, you got to get the point that he's a carry to a different crowd, too. And honestly, I haven't seen much of his ring, uh, like work at Ring of Honor. I need to do a little bit more research on that. But as what I saw at NXT, he was good, but he was not like, oh, my God, this guy was great, you know. A guy that had, like, oh, my goodness, every time I saw him, it's like he can't wait to say, like, like The Rock or, you know, Stone Cold, uh, Hogan, you know, guys like that. You know, I'm sorry, I put my standards pretty high, but when you have someone that over, I think you need to have someone. I think you need someone like, you know what, we need a guy that is so over. But also, you need someone to uh, also have some good, like, you know, he's good in the ring. Not good in the ring, but also in Mike's skills, also in all these other things. But anyway, Daniel Bryan wasn't done for the, uh, the night and everything. Um, you had him taking on Batista, and good golly, Miss Batista. I mean, I like Batista. I think he's good or what have you. He is just winded. The dude is just blows up, and it's a shame because I like Batista. I think he's great, but my goodness, man, it's, the dude is blown up. He, he, just, he gets tired after a while. He, 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 you can see he's gassed uh, for most part of it. I mean, he, I mean he's just He's not cutting it. I don't want to be like I don't want to be that guy. He's like, oh, man, oh yeah, man, this, this is my Batista, but he is not. I'm like, and this is the guy they picked for him to go to the to to the um, to fight uh, Randy Orton at WrestleMania, and now they're thinking about changing the plans, which honestly I think that's a good thing. But why put a person who is clearly not ready in a match like this? Why would you put him in that situation where he can not only injure himself but others? Hell, I don't. I, mean, I don't think Marvel wants their one of their main stars in the movie in Gal- Guardians of the Galaxy lipping up on a wet carpet with, a, with crutches on. I don't think Marvel slash Disney wants that. So I think the WWE should honestly. I honestly have no idea why WWE put him in this position. I know it's okay. It gets gold equals. He can just parade it around and paste and put that hard sell on Guardians of the Galaxy, which right now, as much as I like that trailer, it needs a lot of marketing. It needs a lot of help because it's a little too out there. This looks like it's going to be way out there as a movie. And again, Batista will sell it hard, but I think the best way to do it, I think he should have. I don't think he should have won the World Rumble. Um, hell, I, I just think he is not ready in that ring shape to actually compete in that main stage. I think it's going to be a real problem for Batista, and it just it will show. Uh, but overall, um, Hijack Raw, I would think it was success. How the crowd just chanted CM Punk and, uh, and Buddha, uh, CM Punk, CM Punk, and, and they weren't really interested in everyone else. They were interested with Dolph Ziggler, um, uh, Usos, Daniel Bryan, uh, the Shields Watts, there were basically barely any um, CM Punk chance until the Wire promo, which, again, as much as I like Barry Wyatt, his promos do, he, he, it's, you know, a long string of words, you know, in, in fact, it's, it's a long string of words, but in the end, it means nothing. I mean, he's, it's, and again, as much as I like Barry Wyatt, it just seems like he's trying a little too hard. You know, it doesn't seem it flows naturally with him. It doesn't flow natural with him. His early NXT days, it looked like the stuff flowed natural with him. Um, and all this type of stuff. I mean, there's some good nuggets he has in there. You know, I, w- I will build my uh, a, my throne on the uh, the next to the sea to so watch my uh, enemies drown. That's, that's a nice little line there. But overall, it just feels like he's, just play acting at this point. Um, you know, I feel like it's just play acting, and 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 as much as I like him, I feel like he's trying to be a worse cos. I mean, he's like a basically a cosplaying Raven. How Raven felt like more 
Um, you know, you could really feel what Raven was. Maybe that was part of it at, at the time. I mean, I know he's trying to do get into that uh, that tiny type of pro tiny type of you know stuff like Jake the Snake, but he's trying a little too hard. I mean, he's yelling and screaming. With a pro a guy like that, he doesn't need to yell and scream. He needs, doesn't need to announce his words. He just needs to calm down. I mean, Jake the Snake got all that stuff done in at least in less than a minute instead of him going around doing all this type of stuff. But that's just my personal opinion. I mean, back in the day, guys got things said and done in like in a minute, and like a minute and 50 seconds. They got the entire feud and everything over in a minute and 50 seconds, much less so. He didn't get like all this type of long, um, long stuff like Triple H does. I mean, that to me just stops the show right there. You don't need uh, a 30-minute segment to, to, to show a match or what have you. You could use that time. You could get that time done. Five minutes, four minutes, three minutes, two minutes, two, three, four. I mean, a segment should not, a promo segment to my eyes should not last more than 10 minutes. If you can't get your stuff across in 10 minutes or less, you're going to get people out of the crowd. People are going to get bored. But then that's just a, you know, by the way, I love this great guest too in the chat. says, eh, hijacking will never work as WD will spin into the whole, hey, it's a response that means we're having fun crap. On the other spectrum, both count shows and merch will work with WWE as WWE will always make money. If anything, pure apathy from fans in attendance is key, as in staying completely silent for the parts they hate. I can say that, but I don't think, you know, put them in the wallet. Eventually, yeah, I mean, people, WWE will make their money, but I think if you do, like, say, don't buy the WWE Network or anything else like that, you know, eventually, or, you know, just you know, wait. I mean, I think that will eventually work. And honestly, if it does get to that point, like the WEO to always get money, but again, it starts with if you don't like the product, don't buy it, don't watch it, what have you. You know, that sort of thing. And um, honestly, the real reason why I did buy the WE Network is basically, and I may have disappointed some of the product. I am watching NXT, which is a great stuff here. Uh, with WWE, which is funny because it's a wrestling show. And when they transfer the guys onto the show, and they completely are lost. It's just sad because, you, know, you know, they can't really book a wrestling show. Uh, anyway. Uh, overall, I honestly did not really feel like Monday Night Raw was really, you know, stuff I would go back and watch again. It was three hours again. I just can't watch a show for three hours and not feel bored. And, um, you know, people have, but the thing is, that's true, but it's the profit margin is slowly dwindling. Well, yeah, it's, the reason why that is because, you know, The Rock and everything, the Snell Jacks. The reason why this thing is happening, guess too, is nostalgia. I mean, they're bringing back Batista, The Rock, and, um, and all those guys. Hell, the Undertaker's the old thing is basically back in nostalgia. And eventually it will happen, and when the nostalgia stuff runs off of them, they're going to be like, okay, what are we going to do with these stars now? They're going to have to start really building them, and Hopefully, and I really think this will happen maybe in 2015 or 16, they're going to actually start actually paying attention to them and actually help bring back jobs again and actually start actually having these stars not face each other and actually build up the pay-per-views. But, hey, that's my personal opinion. Um, anyway, um, we'll be, gosh, I've been ranting for so long. <laughs> I need to do a little break here so I can get uh, what my throat because my throat's getting a bit parched. Um, I will be um, <clears throat> back and um, after the break. I will be talking about TNA Impact Wrestling and talk about reviewing the show and also my thoughts on TNA Lockdown as well. This is the DCT Lounge live here on TalkTee.com. Thank you for listening to me, Duke CT. And we'll be right back right after this.
way out we put this darkness behind us and underground is my oration sound integration but situation is we're surrounded by light negation this black is pitch cause we're trapped by our violent souls in a deep mind with deep rhymes won't keep my self-control too many foes we feel snake bit and we won't take it enemies need their face hit we going ape shit hell is my confinement within this mind now trap hey. Hold up, man. Um, <clears throat> don't worry, man. It's okay. Don't need to call in right now. But hey, if anyone else is out there on the radio land on talkshoe.com, remember the phone number is always 724444. Once again, the call right here to make an EBCT is 724444. The call needs to connect to me. DCP is 92417. Again, the call D is 92417. That was fun. Now, okay, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, man, this, I haven't gone over this far in the podcast in quite a long, it's all short podcast, but it looks like I'm actually going to go over This is a good reason because, ladies and gentlemen, TNA lockdown and all is about to uh, begin and everything else. We're going to talk a little bit about impact uh, and um, actually the stuff going into lockdown. And I got to say, I have been really, really excited for it. Um, and impact has been going pretty well. You've had a very good, uh, a very, very good opening three, uh, uh, no, no, a, a six man tag um, elimination match. It's someone who the placement of lockdown, really good stuff. Um, I honestly think it was great. It was a great match. It was a very good match. And it showed the badasses of the Wolves with uh, the ending. I mean, they, uh, the conniving of uh, Elson Aries, uh, basically taking out everyone using uh, Cheney Hill tactics to take out um, uh, MVP and all these guys and everything else. Uh, but honestly, I really think it was a very interesting way, a very interesting way to um, to really put this thing up um, uh, with um, if uh, any uh, uh, David Richards really trying to prove himself, um, getting himself his arm injured, thanks to via Austin Aries with the chair shots, and then performing later on tonight, he really he put off some really good guts out there uh, uh, with guts. And in the end, though, Robert Roo wins the uh, man advantage of Team uh, of uh, Team Dixie in um, TNA lockdown. Looking like, well, not only do you have an injured guy on, on lockdown, but also saying, yeah, it looks like it's the end. It looks like Team MVP is looking to be um, in dire straits. Next, um, honestly, you had some really good stuff between um, that was really good um, <clears throat> uh, stuff with um, uh, Sam Saul and um, Mr. Anderson. I really liked that. Mr. Anderson was hilariously uh, funny with, uh, you know, with uh, all the stuff that's going on with uh, Sam Saul and the attack later on tonight. It was uh, later on, on the night. It was really good, and I really enjoyed this. Uh, and also, I really liked the Samoa Joe, um, Samoa Joe, Magnus Fuel. And it looks like, again, it looks like it's going to be um, still, I think it looks like they're doing so heavily on Joe. But it looks like it might be a title change, but not, I don't know. I don't know how the heck you could do that, but we're not surprised. And I want Joe to tap out. But if he does, if Magnus loses here, I wouldn't be mad. But I think uh, Magnus needs a longer reign, maybe after this anniversary. I want a triple threat match between him, Joe, and Magnus, Joe, and Rude at this anniversary. Joe winning and continuing to have a long championship reign until, say, next year's lockdown. That was, I think, it is. Um, but, um, yeah, I think this is uh, something I really think it's going to be, um, you know, I think it's going to be a really good, um, actually a very good, very good show of um, interesting stuff. I mean, 
first off, you have, I think, um, Manic versus Tiger Uno, Exhibition Showcase, the return of Manic. I think that's going to look really good. The Tiger Uno, dumb name, but I, I've never seen much of him. I think I might actually start watching some of this stuff, see uh, how good he is. He has Steel Cage match. We have um, Samuel Shaw versus Mr. Anderson. You have the infomercial six-man team Steel Cage match. You have Bad Influence and Chris Saban taking on Great Muda. Uh, C.I. Sana and Naka Un. Uh, let's see, C.I. Sana, I think he's the X Division champion as he pinned Austin Aries in the um, Wrestle, TNA Wrestle 1 outbreak. I think that's what uh, happened. Let's see, was it? Yes, yes. C.I. Sana defeated Austin Aries becoming the champion. Interesting stuff. Are they going to sign him to the deal? And if he does have a deal, what about option C? Would they give uh, Samuel um, San, uh, um, <clears throat> would they give the X Division champion, the new X Division champion, Seria Senda? Hopefully, I'm pronouncing that right. Um, the um, the the um, chance to become TNA World Champion. I don't know. I haven't seen them. This could be a very interesting little wrinkle, and if they want to continue on to this. Next up, we have EC3 taking on a steel case challenge. You don't know what's going to happen. I think it's going to be um, a job or what have you for EC3. Next, you have a cage match, but also a last man standing match. Wait, what? How did that work? Um, okay. Um, I don't think you should make I don't know how you're going to make that. Cage match is already violent enough, but why make it a last man? Why put a gimmick within a gimmick? <sighs> Gimmick exception. It's just I, I mean it's stupid. I mean a last man standing match in a cage? Why? A cage match it doesn't need to have a last man standing move. It doesn't need any gimmick whatsoever. Kill cage is good enough already for a violent feud, Storm and Gunner. You don't need it to be last man standing. Uh, whatever. Um I have um this may be a good idea to have Storm get a big victory. Also I have Shaw and um, winning against Mr. Anderson. And I have Tiger Moodle beating Manic. Um, and also I have um, the great Muda, CSN on Nano K winning, and EC3 beating his Doe Case Challenge. And Doe Kim versus Master Rain, I don't care about this match because there's no non- new knockouts. We need new knockouts. Um, Master Rain retains her championship. And then you have Team MVP with uh, Team Dixie, the leader of the room, the captain. Uh, Bobby Roode, the factor of professional wrestling, the greatest man to ever live, Austin Aries, the bromance, Robbie E. and Jesse Godless, the tag team champs, with Team MVP, MVP as captain, the charismatic enigma, Jeff Hardy, and the Wolves, Davey Richards and Eddie Everts. One of these got one of these things is not like the other. One of those things just don't belong. None of these things is not like the others. Please tell me which team just doesn't belong. If you don't know the answer to that, get your head examined. <laughs> uh, and now the time for the main event. Samoa Joe versus Max for the World Heavyweight Championship. And the match can be won via submission or knockout. Could this be the end of Magnus's reign, or will Samoa Joe's rage get the best of him, and Magnus will pull off the impossible victory? We don't know, but it can be interesting to say the least. As lockdown takes place from Miami, Florida, Sunday, March 9th, 2014, I'm pumped for this pay-per-view. I got there. This could be very good, and all matches will be contested in a steel cage. I like this. So overall, I think this is going to be very good, a very good pay-per-view. Uh, okay. Uh, but it does it does sound pretty good and something to put my money money out there. <laughs> yes, guess too. Gimmick within a gimmick. We saw heaven. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, all right, we're going to take another little break here. Oh, yeah. Today, never watching the entire pay-per-view all the way through? You should. There's some good stuff there. And uh, just... There's some good stuff in there. 
All right, um, we'll be right back right after this. Uh, thank you so much for for um, being here live here at the Dixie Tea Lounge. Thank you so much um, for listening to me, Dixie Tea, live here at the Dixie Tea Lounge. We'll be right back right after this. Here on the DCT Lounge. Phone number as always is 724 444 7444. The number is 724 444 7444. When the call ID to connect to me, DCT is 9241. Once again, the call ID is 9241. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the Batman is back. And this time, his rightful home in the video game world is not in Origins, that glitchy. Mess of a game. Fuck you, Warner Brothers Interactive, for not releasing a pack. Hell, fuck you for not actually finishing the damn game. He's got. Why? I have... This is why I really hate games of this generation. Hell, this is one of the reasons why I might not buy the next Batman Arkham Knight, because I wait to wait till at least the Game of the Year edition so I at least have all the bugs fixed out of it. But that's just my thing. All right. But to be fair, in the interest of fairness, let me just get this out of the way. Batman Arkham Knight looks awesome. And this right here looks great. The new Batman looks awesome. It looks, you know, it finally looks like it's going to be taking, um, you know, the, the, the dark. I mean, it's basically just really good. It's a the series looks great. It looks like, wow, this is going to be a great finale. This looks like it's going to be a really good finale of uh, of Batman, of uh, you know seeing how he will finally looks like it's going to reach his end. It looks like it's like, oh, this might be the the end of Batman and all that good stuff. And I gotta say, that looks. Itch- and I honestly say, you know what? I can't wait. I honestly cannot wait to see what uh, the the the, uh, dark, uh, the Dark Knight gets into. I have to say it was a very fun, it was I mean the the trailer wow I mean the trailer alone really just it sold me on the game the trailer sold me on the game it looked great you can play as Harley Quinn be voice by Tara Strong which I have no problem with whatsoever um, the story looks like it's going to be um, uh, uh, Batman um, story right now Batman. Uh, Exactly. It looks like the story um, is like a sequel of Dark Knight Rises. It looks like it's going to be um, it looks like it's going to be, well, let's see. Um, uh, since Batman I mean, it looks like since Batman killed off the Joker, I mean, Joker died after the Arkham City. Spoilers, people. Uh, Joker dies at the Arkham City, and it looks like the, the Rogues Gallery of Batman is like, oh crap, Joker's dead. It looks like Batman actually killed him off. Now it looks like it looks like now all the villains are getting together, and they're like, holy, you know, the the people are coming back. Um, you know, they look like, okay, what's going on? Um, it looks like, like, okay, what's going on here? It looks like uh, Batman, all of the enemies are, are getting up together and just saying we're going to finally put the end of the Dark Knight. Scarecrow looks like he's going to be a major, major villain. He's going to poison Gotham with his big fair toxin and basically every one of the streets leaves. Which again, basically gets a clear out saying that only the gangs and what have you are going to close in and take out Batman. 
But just to me, it's just like a really, really crappy thing. I would love to see a Batman would basically have everyone there. It's just like it's just a, an excuse just to have, okay, well, just have all the people you beat up on the street are not civilians. They're just evil people. Yay! Ugh. But, yeah. That's what I just feel like. Um, but, hey, that's just my thing. But it looks like it's going to be some real interesting stuff. Uh, again, it looks like it's going to be... Uh, uh, it's going to finally be the finale of it, and which I roll my eyes at because they'll find a way to make something else. Hopefully, this might actually bring it to a Justice League. Oh, hell, maybe a Flash game. Which honestly, that's a guy who has a kick-ass Rose Gallery and gets no love. I don't know why Flash has not gotten a, a game yet, but honestly, um, I'm I'm here hoping that um. Um, you know, I mean, yeah. It looks like it is. It seems like, and then when I look at the stories right here, it looks like, you know, Batman, after the Crackle City, crime, after Joker is basically dead, crime is reduced, Batman is at the top of his game, and now Super Villains have been working behind the scenes trying to death of the Joker, but realize they can't take over the city with bats around, so they decide to band together and take them down once for all, which I said before. The game takes place in basically parallel Arkham Origins. And and it looks like it's saying that um, Batman is going to have to take on all this stuff by himself. Um, and now you're going to have not only that, but it looks like they're going to have a. They're going to finally have the Batmobile. It's going to um, drive around, take out people. You know, take out uh, thugs and beat them up or what have you, which is interesting. And um, and um, they're fine. Hopefully, at the end of the day, we might actually be like, hey, we finally got the Joker is gone. I'm hopeful. I'm ho- I'm hopeful that they actually are going to say, okay, the Joker is not the only Batman villain out there. Here's hoping they might actually uh, do something with this character. But honestly, um, and I, I, again, I think this is going to be a really good game, and uh, I'm hope. Um, and some people say Batman's going to finally die. Some say it's going to be some different, but honestly, we don't know. But hey, I, I'm hopeful for this new thing. I'm hopeful to have this thing come back and look. It's going to be great. Anyway, um, hey, I, I know on a positive note, first term of DC Knowledge, I know it's a real but kick-ass positive note. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, DC Round is closing. Um, thank you so much for listening to me, DCT, guest two. You're awesome. We're sticking to me for 50 minutes. I'm going to cut some of this stuff down, hopefully to a manageable length, around probably like 40 minutes or what have you. And I'm on this, and it's going to be um, up on Saturday. And I'm going to try to get my next big review. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to pause it. Yeah. I'm going to try to get my next big review up, hopefully by the middle of next week. If things go according to plan, which it looks like they might be, um, I'm going to be doing that as well during the, uh, the weekend, doing some some stuff in school and some other things that I am relatively hush hush about right now. But anyway, it's going to be great. It's going to be there's going to be some more awesome content coming from me, Duke CT, in the near future. Anyway, thank you so much, Duke CT here. Peace and love. I will see y'all when I see y'all later.